Hey everyone, I'm Ashley and I'm here to make Wix simple. So today we are going to be talking about creating a directory. Um, it is, you know, a way to display members of your team. Maybe you're part of a collective. So in this case, the example that I'm showing you is a wellness collective. And what we've done here is created a directory that you can then filter and search for particular practitioners and some, if you want a coach, you can find coaches if you want to find somebody who does herbalism, etc. So I'm going to talk about how we can build this um, both as a means to display team members or members of a directory, um, as well as how to add function search functions um, if you do want to create a searchable directory. So I'm hopping over to a site draft. Um, we're going to start a little bit from scratch here just so that you can see the entire process. Um, there are, if you're using Wix, which if you're watching this, you most likely are, there are so many different ways to achieve a, a single goal on Wix, which is both a wonderful thing and also can sometimes make it really frustrating. Um, so I'm going to show you definitely one way, probably like the path of least resistance, as well as some additional means of doing this. So um, whether you are just like, I am a beginner and I'm barely scraping by, I'm just doing my best, you'll be able to accomplish your goal. Or if you're a more advanced designer, you have more experience, I'm going to show you some ways to make it an even more custom experience. So we are in a draft of a site. Um, what we're going to be using for our directory is CMS. And so when you're in your editor, I'm working in the classic editor. I did not and do not like, and Editor X is no longer a thing, thank goodness, but um, your editor, depending on how you built your site, might look a little different from this. You should still be able to find the same tools if they're not where I'm showing you and this is not what your you know, editor looks like. This um, search bar is going to come in handy for you because if you just pop it open and type in what you're looking for, it's going to pull up what you need. Um, okay, so I'm in the editor, just an old school, the only thing I even mess around with, editor. And we're going to go over here on our left side panel down to CMS. I've already loaded CMS onto the site. If you haven't loaded CMS, you're going to be prompted when this pops open to add it. Just click add. It'll load it on. You'll be good to go. You'll be right where I am. Um, okay, so you know, we can build a, you can build any element or feature or function totally from scratch on your Wix website and then make the connections that you need to, to make. Or you can utilize a lot of the presets or the templates that are already available to you. In this case, we're just going to use a preset. Um, you can still completely customize a preset, but it takes a lot of work out of the process for you, especially if you're a beginner. So from CMS, what I'm going to do here is choose start with a preset and I'm going to click that and I'm going to be shown all the different options that I have. So the options here are they kind of range. Um, one thing I always encourage people to think about is like just because something is presented to you as like a list of services or a list of recipes, um, it doesn't have to, you know, display services or recipes. It could just dis display artwork from a portfolio or team members. So, um, you know, it's really great to have these things at our disposal so that it saves us a lot of work, but I don't ever want anyone to feel like confined to utilizing something in a specific way. So in this case, let's say we use this team members. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click add to site. Um, and then what that's going to do is it's going to create a page for me. And in this case, it's going to be a dynamic page. And so whenever I add a page to my website, um, there are certain parts that I want to look at so that one, I don't forget, um, but so that I just know that they're taken care of. This popped me right into the CMS itself. So I'm just going to take a moment and pop back out of here. Um, what I'm going to go back to is just kind of some higher level settings on this page. Um, it's something that I just want to talk about that applies to any page you build on your site. So um, here we have it. The page that populated utilizing that preset is not part of the, it's part of the normal site menu. You can see it here. It, it 
titled itself team, but it's technically a dynamic page. So it's going to be under dynamic pages. And what that does is it creates like the full, it creates these designs that you can then plug in information from a spreadsheet to without having to like build, you know, say you have 30 team members, you don't want to build 30 pages for, you know, each of those team members. That's an instance where you're, you're going to utilize dynamic data. Anyways, let's say we want to rename this, right? So I'm going to call this a directory for this particular site. And so I don't want it to be named team. So I'm going to go over to that particular page. In this case, dynamic page. I'm going to click the ellipses here and I'm going to go into the settings. Um, from there, what I can do is one, I can adjust the, the URL slug. So if this is team, I want it to probably be directory. And then um, I can also go into the SEO settings. So what's the page title, the page's title, what have you, the meta description, keywords, etc. cetera. Um, those are settings that I feel are often overlooked. So I just wanted to show them to you. You're gonna wanna spend, you know, five minutes in this part of your, on your site and in this page so that the information is accurate to what you're building. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with, you know, the standard plugin um, information. I'm also going to go, I'm going to rename the item on my menu to directory. Save that. And then I can start thinking about the um, specifics. Oh, Sorry, I didn't talk you through what I was just doing. I'm going to rename these pages. I'm hitting the ellipses, clicking the little text rename directory. And then I'm going to call this this, which is like a the individual user or person. I'm going to call that practitioner. OK, so now that I know that I have like the high level things set up for this, um, I am going to work on my CMS. So I'll exit out of that. And what I can see is, you know, I on this site had set up my, my kind of like brand kit. So it knows the fonts and the colors that I'm using. So it's already branded to my site. Um, if that's not the case for you, if you are not, if it's, you know, very generic and it doesn't reflect your site's branding. Um, you can individually make edits to any of these elements or say you don't like that everything left justified and you want them to be center justified. Just because we've started with a preset, it does not mean we need to keep everything exactly as it is. But I'm happy with the way that it is, so we're going to move forward. What I can see here is I have this little bubble thing and it shows me that it's called team. And what that is, is that is showing me the spreadsheet that is connected to this design element, which is a repeater. So I want to go into that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it, select it, and then I'm going to go to manage content. It's going to pop open your CMS and it's going to show you, you know, what are the fields that are part of the spreadsheet? Uh, you know, what kind of fields are they, etc. And you can either use the existing fields as they stand, which is absolutely acceptable. Or if, you know, it's not even close to what you need, you can start from scratch. Um, in this case, for this example of having a directory, you know, I'm going to say most of that information is perfectly fine. But what I do want to do is um, add the field that is going to allow me to filter the results. All right. So let's say, you know, let's, this looks like, okay, they're team people, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a field and that field is going to be for tags. So tags are what is going to allow us to mark individual people in this case, um, as part of a category and then allow them to show up when people filter for that category. So I'm going to hit tag. I'm going to go ahead and choose that field type. And maybe I call this one like um, service type or something. And then call it good. And I'm going to save it. And then here what I can do 
is add any of the tags that I want to apply to these particular people. So let's say Brian is a public speaker and a mathematician <laughs> and a whatever, you know. I can add as many, you know, tags as I want to each individual member of this CMS so that when somebody's looking for that particular tag, that person shows up, okay? So we're just, you know, getting a little bit off of what, like the, you know, template brand that we were working with, but it's all good. Um, let's say Brian is a speaker and a, I don't even know guys, what it, what is Brian? He is a, I don't know, we'll call him a speaker. And Ashley is also a speaker and a coach. And Brad is not a speaker, but a coach. And Kelly is a therapist. <laughs> okay, just so you get an idea. And you can add as many of these tags as you want, as I said, okay? But this tag field is what is going to allow us to filter our collection. So, you know, I'm just keeping the existing information here, but in your instance, what you're going to be doing is making sure that you're editing, you know, and adding your people and their actual faces and job titles and et cetera, and making the spreadsheet work for you. And the last thing that we would do after we have our spreadsheet set up, if we want this to be instead of just kind of like the static list of team members, but we wanted it to be something that someone on our website could search and filter, we're gonna be adding that search and filter uh, option, okay? So I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna delete this team member. After we have made space for our little search bar, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two different elements. So I'm gonna go to the add panel over here. I'm going to go down to input. And then depending on how you want, um, oh, I'm a little frozen here. I'm going to go down to input, depending on how you want somebody to search, um, you know, if you wanted it to be selection, you could use selection tags where, you know, somebody could just kind of click the tags that they want to filter. It could be a radio button. It could be a drop down. In this case, I'm just going to show you a drop down. Um, so, you know, depending on the function that you want yours to serve, it's kind of up to you. Um, we're going to set this up just like the sample that I had shown at the beginning of the video where it's going to drop down from all of the different options and then search from there. So we have our drop down. Now what we want to do is add a button as well. Um, you can choose any pre-designed button or if you've set up some themed buttons, that's great too. I'll pull one of those out, uh, get those all lined up, and then you're going to be ready to make them function. Okay. So what we need to do now that we have this drop down input and this button here is we need to connect them to our database. So we also need them to like, you know, display the things we want to display. So the easiest thing we can do first is go ahead over to this button, change the text, and we're just going to change the text to say search. We are also going to go to the drop down and then we're gonna get that connected. So when you have it selected, you can see all of your different options that you can use with this element. This little squiggly line over here is how you connect it to your CMS. I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And then what I'm shown are the options that I have for ways to connect this to CMS. This can either collect content submitted by a site visitor or filter content. In this case, it's gonna filter content. So what I'm gonna do is click filter content I'm going to choose the data set, which in this case it's called team, um, but you know, probably should have called it directory, whatever it's called. You'll be able to tell because it's on your page. So I'm going to have it, or it might be your only one, like in this case. So I'm going to select the data set and then I'm going to choose how I want to filter that content. Content by that tag field that we set up. So if I scroll down, I'm going to be able to find service type, which is what I called it, but I can also see in parentheses here that it is tags. So I'm going to click that. What that's going to do is it's automatically going to load in all of those tags that I that I entered. So like coach, whatever I put, right? Um, and then I can make kind of the final design adjustments to this right here. So, you know, 
if I click on this, I can see that it says above it filter by service type. I might want to change that. I might want to click into it, go into the settings there and say, I do not want the uh, field title to be visible or I do, or I wanted to say something else. Um, you can choose what the placeholder text is for that. Um, and then also um, just kind of high level settings for this. So what I like to do after making connections is hop into preview, take a look at what it looks like and also how it functions and then make my final adjustments. So I noticed when I, I was just kind of peeking that I think when I pop this down, it's like yellow and I do not want it to be yellow. So that's something I would change. Um, but let's also see how it functions. So if I want to find speakers, I can go down. Notice too that the way that you um, type in your tag is the way that it's going to display here. So if you're not using capitals or using all caps or all lowercase, that is actually how it will display. Um, and it looks like I don't actually need the search bar for this or the search button for this particular setup. It looks like it's automatically filtering. So um, I'm going to delete that because I don't need it. And then I would, I would personally remove, I would not want that filter by service type to be visible. I would add a text element and design it so that it looked better. Um, and then, but say, you know, you, that's exactly how you wanted it. Um, we're talking solely about like what that drop down looks like. That is what, that is going to be over in design. So if I wanted to change that, I would select it, hit design, and then I could choose a different, you know, pre-designed dropdown, and maybe that works for me. Um, so if you're a beginner level, find one that you like and go with it, right? Don't make your life more complicated. Um, but if you have more experience or you're more confident in Wix and you want to really customize it, yeah, like that's better. I'm happy with that. Um, but if you really wanted to customize it, you know, say you always use a specific font, you would go to that same place, select your item, click the paintbrush, which is for design. And then from the one that you have selected, you can further customize by clicking down here, customize design. And from there, you're going to be able to um, really choose settings for every state of this. So how it looks normally on hover on focus on error you can adjust the background color the fonts all of that and really customize it what the drop down looks like what the font on the drop down looks like um so you know either uh, my kind of rule of thumb is either keep it really simple really clean or have it be very on brand so um depending on what you feel comfortable with you know those are your options. Uh, the final thing that I want to say is that anytime you are making big changes on desktop, so on your web browser, check it on mobile. Um, sometimes Wix does a great job of optimizing for mobile and it, you know, puts things in a place that makes sense. And sometimes it does a terrible job. So the last step would be to hop over to this mobile view and take a look at what you've just created and see, does this actually make sense? So in this case, you know, like, yeah, there's my thing, my directory, those are my people, but you know, maybe this is too skinny or it's in the wrong place or something. You can make those final adjustments on the mobile view so that it looks great and then hit publish. Um, so that is kind of like huge, like big picture stuff, but hopefully that was enough information to walk you through kind of starting from nothing and getting to a place where you have all of the pieces that you need to make a directory that your clients can search. And if you have any questions about the process or you have an idea for another video, feel free to let me know and subscribe for future videos.